G'day, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this edition of MGuy EV News for Wednesday the 10th of July 2024. Please make sure you're subscribed and make sure you enable all notifications so you never miss another video. So this is a very interesting story in the unintended consequences section uh, where the production of lithium ion batteries is causing some of the nastiest chemicals uh, to be released into the environment. Green phonies study reveals electric vehicle batteries are a source of hazardous forever chemical pollution. A new study published in Nature Communications has uncovered a concerning link between lithium ion batteries commonly used in electric vehicles and the spread of harmful per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS, also known as forever chemicals. Business Insider reports that the research, conducted by a team of scientists including Jennifer Guelfo from Texas Tech University and Lee Ferguson from Duke University, has identified a specific class of PFAS called bisperfluoroalkyl sulfonamides, bisFASIs, in lithium-ion batteries. These chemicals, which are used to enhance battery performance and reduce flammability, were found in high concentrations in environmental samples near EV battery manufacturing plants in the United States, Belgium and France. PFAS have earned the moniker Forever Chemicals due to their persistence in the environment and their potential to accumulate in living organisms. They have been associated with various health issues including liver damage, high cholesterol, low birth weights and chronic kidney disease. The discovery of bis-FASIs in EV batteries raises new concerns about the environmental impact of the transition to cleaner energy technologies. Do they really care about the environmental impacts of transitioning? Not really. I mean, you just have to look at the mining for minerals for EV batteries to know that they really don't care. As long as we get to our net zero utopia, doesn't matter how you get there. And even the oil and gas producers are starting to uh, regret or at least have concerns about their rush to new energy and renewable energy sources. Uh, and they're heading back to what they know best. Why the oil giants are beating a hasty green retreat. Big Oil has, on both sides of the Atlantic, decided to focus on new oil and gas projects, cutting costs and dividends. Ben Van Buren, the former chief executive of Shell, often made the point that, however much his company invested in renewable energy, he'd have one group of investors saying it was too much and one group saying it was too little. Similarly, when he reduced oil and gas production, shareholders would be split between those chiding him for moving too fast and those berating him for being too slow. His successor, Vile Savan, has clearly taken the view that ensuring everyone is unhappy might be a good definition of compromise, but isn't the best way to run a multinational company. Since he took over at the beginning of last year, Shell has dialed back on renewables and put a great emphasis on oil and gas. Over at BP, Murray Orkinloss, another new arrival in the chief executive hot seat, is now making very similar noises. Little wonder the company's shares have underperformed rivals to such an extent in recent months that there's even been speculation it could become a takeover target. Something had to give. In response, Orkinloss has said he's slowing down investments in big-budget low-carbon projects, particularly in offshore wind, and prioritising investment and maybe even buying new oil and gas assets, particularly in the Gulf of Mexico and shale basins in the US. Both Van Buren and Bernard Looney, Oshinloss's former boss, strongly argued that oil giants were the company's best place to manage and possibly even catalyse the energy transition. While the US firms ExxonMobil and Chevron have ploughed on with fossil fuels, seemingly oblivious to climate concerns, Shell and BP made big bets on renewables. They were rewarded with big hits to their earnings. Well, petrol and diesel and oil products are going to be around for decades and decades and decades to come. Probably for centuries to come. So they should do what they do best and keep pumping out oil and gas. Good for them. So as the EV slowdown hits globally, that affects all the suppliers and the supply chain manufacturers like uh, battery suppliers um, that are also struggling now thanks to the uh, slowdown. Europe's battery industry hit by EV slowdown and Chinese competition. Region cell startups have suffered a series of major setbacks in recent months. 
Europe's nascent battery industry is reeling from the global slowdown in electric car sales, forcing companies to cancel or postpone projects that would have powered more than 2 million EVs for a year. Slow consumer uptake and competition from Chinese cell manufacturers have led to a pullback in investment plans for about 158 gigawatt hours of forecast production in the region since the start of the year, according to lithium battery consultancy SC Insights. The car manufacturers in Europe are not putting in the orders for these batteries, said Andy Leyland, managing director of SC Insights. A lack of long-term planning by European governments and car makers will mean the Chinese take big chunks of the battery industry, he added. European car companies have wound back on electrification plans after battery-powered vehicle sales only grew 2.4% in the region in the first five months of 2024 to about 800,000 units from a year ago. In a sign of worsening demand, sales fell 11% year-on-year in May alone, according to data from CIU Group, a commodities business intelligence company. Uh, It's just another sign of the general slowdown in the EV demand in Europe and globally as well. And uh, unfortunately, these supply chain uh, companies will also suffer from this slowdown. So if you saw my main video today about the absolute desecration of Australia's countryside just to please the net zero wind farm zealots, other countries with beautiful landscapes and beautiful environments are taking action and getting a bit fed up with this. Sardinia blows up over invasion of wind farms. Politicians and activists want the power to decide whether more renewable energy developments can be built on the island. The governor of Sardinia has suspended the construction of hundreds of wind turbines, claiming they will destroy the beauty of the Mediterranean island's mountain peaks, farmland and sweeping beaches. Yes, they will. Alessandra Todde, president of Sardinia, declared an 18-month moratorium on the construction of wind farms on the island, where applications have been submitted to add 3,000 new turbines to the existing 780. Sardinia can finally decide its destiny, said Todde, who was elected on a left-wing ticket last year. Todde told the Times that Sardinia planned to take over from the Italian government the power to decide where turbines could be placed on the island. There will be no more permits given over the heads of Sardinians, she said. Well, same is happening here in Australia. The countryside is being absolutely desecrated by wind farms and solar panels. It's disgusting what's happening. It's like they don't care about the environment as long as it's got net zero attached to it. Then anything goes. Well, enough is enough. Stop. Time to stop. So another story about how the taxes and revenue that you normally get from regular cars are not being recovered from EVs and how, in this case, a US state is having to slap Uh, a registration cost on EVs in order to try and recoup some of those uh, taxes and revenues. Own an electric car in New Jersey, an extra yearly EV registration fee is now in effect. To register an EV, owners now have to pay the regular registration fee plus an additional yearly fee of $250. If you plan to buy and register an electric car here in New Jersey, save a little more money. News 12's Lauren Dew at a charging station in Woodbridge. She got reaction to the new additional EV registration fee. Well, the cost of owning an electric vehicle in New Jersey just went up. What am I going to do? The additional EV registration fee already started on July 1st. There's a lot more people who drive internal combustion engine vehicles get mad at me for not paying taxes, so to speak, on gas taxes. So to register a zero emissions vehicle, you now have to pay the regular registration fee and an additional annual fee of $250, which then increases $10 per year for the next four years, according to the governor's office, capped at $290. New EV owners will be required to pay four years up front. You know, so it's disappointing, but it, it is what it is. The money goes into the Transportation Trust Fund program, which then will support various transportation infrastructure projects. This is a different concept compared to surrounding states. So yeah, in Pennsylvania, it's a little different. Um, They only have, like every year, you have to get an inspection and as well as emissions, but my car EV doesn't have emissions. Just a regular registration fee. There's nothing extra we have to pay in Connecticut. New Jersey is set to ban the sale of new gasoline-powered vehicles by 2035 
and limit those sales starting in 2027. Uh, I mean, that's kind of crazy. I'm not sure why they're like penalizing people for getting electric vehicles when there's a, like a push for clean energy and stuff. You know, if they're trying to push it and trying to incentivize it for people, $250 doesn't seem like a, a great idea to charge extra people on top of it if they're trying to be good for the environment. There are so many more comments coming in on social media. That is where the conversation continues. We're in Woodbridge. Lauren Dew, News 12, New Jersey. I think this pattern will be repeated all over now um, because governments are realizing they're not getting their share of revenue. Um, there's all sorts of other things about the weight of EVs being heavier and they're wearing out roads more and there's a whole bunch of other infrastructure costs associated with uh, EVs and now unfortunately you're gonna have to cough up like the rest of us. Uh, another terrible fire in London. Um, e-bike battery Tottenham cycle shop destroyed after e-bike battery catches fire. A cycle shop in South Tottenham has been completely gutted by fire after an electric bicycle battery burst into flames. Six fire engines and around 40 firefighters attended the blaze above Cycle Stop on West Green Road at around 7pm on Sunday evening. The London Fire Brigade said the fire was caused by the failure of a lithium battery pack for an e-bike. The blaze later spread to other e-bike battery packs situated within the shop. Photos published on social media show the shop completely burnt out with the contents of the ground floor reduced to ash. Yep, they are very, very dangerous. Even an e-bike battery is dangerous. It can destroy an entire house or more. And finally, today's Cybertruck silliness. Sand dunes claim another Tesla Cybertruck rollover. It appears as though a Jeep Wrangler rolled on the same set of dunes. Tesla Cybertrucks seem to be rolling all over the place. After at least two notable incidents in the United States last week, a third just popped up over in China. In the first case, the cause was tough to sort out, but the setting of the third provides some potential clues. Not only did this Tesla roll at a large sand dune, but it appears as though it wasn't the only vehicle to do so. According to the original poster showing the tumble-dried Tesla, the crash happened in a Chinese desert. Of all the Cybertruck crashes we've documented, this looks like the worst by some measure. In fact, every piece of glass looks like it's gone, save for the rear passenger side door glass. The vehicle appears to be stock aside from a wrap with some Chinese writing on it. What little Google could translate comes back in English as play more. Clearly this Cybertruck owner is going to need another vehicle if he's going to do that. The doors appear bent out of shape, the metal on the A pillar is peeled back and since all the glass broke there's no roof either. Quick shot of the hill that this Cybertruck is on shows that it could have rolled several yards before coming to a stop where it did. My goodness. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye for now.